Hello everyone, my name is Sindel. Today we are sewing the AFI Exquisite Bra, an all-time favorite. I highly recommend you watch the tutorial fully before sewing to avoid mistakes. The underwire bra pattern, there are a couple things that you should do to set yourself up for success. Uh, the first thing is to make sure that your preferred underwire fits in the pattern. Um, I know from experience with the Exquisite, my preferred wire does not fit. It's a little bit too tall. Um, so I'm going to show you how I figured that out and what I did to correct it. So to check your wire, you're just going to take your bridge piece and your cradle piece and you're going to overlap them at the seam, which means overlapping this line and this line, because if you just overlap them like this, that's going to add distance that's not actually there. So if it were sewn, it would be sitting just like this. Then you're going to take your wire and put it into the cradle. Um, and I've extended the line here from the bridge because that's the height of the underwire channeling because this isn't going to be here. So starting with your underwire here, walk it within this line. And if you notice, I've done the same thing from the underarm edge. I've extended this line because this is getting folded under since it's the Pico. And you'll see that my wire is slightly too tall. And beyond it being too tall for the pattern, you also want there to be a little bit of wiggle room so that when the wire is pulled open by the tension of the bra, it has room to move around and to spread out. So to fix this, I have simply added, I think, um, just a quarter of an inch here and blended it in to the edge of the pattern. That way, there is a little bit of wiggle room, but it's not adding too much. You could add a little bit here and a little bit at the bridge, but for this kind of adjustment and this pattern, I have found just adding the little bit of extra height to the underarm to be fine. So it'll end up just as it should. This is the bridge for a different size bra than the one that I use. This is my already altered pattern, but I wanted to walk you through really quickly the gothic arch modification. So I can do a video in the future specifically about gothic arches. It's really not difficult at all, but I think it makes the bras a lot more comfortable and just visually interesting. So um, let me get a bra real quick and show you. This is what, this is a AFI exquisite bra as well from a previous video. Um, and it has a gothic arch. You can see in the center, there's that crossover. And this is what it looks like on the inside. So there's two pieces of elastic versus one. And so to do this, you simply are going to take your bridge and you're going to fold it in half. This doesn't have to be a super scientific modification. You just want there to be enough room for the Pico to fold over. Um, and the Exquisite Bra already has a really high um, front here. So you're really not going to remove much I typically just look for where this starts to curve and then make it into a straight line. So I'm going to just snip that like that. And that's going to give us our gothic arch. Um, and of course, this is completely optional. This is just my preference that my bras have a gothic arch. Um, so you can play around with it, but you just want to make sure that you have at least a half of inch here or however tall your pico is for it to tuck under. If you move it too high up, you're going to lose the half of an inch between the underwire channeling and the bottom of the bra, and it's no longer going to be working. But like I said, I'll do that in a future video. For the exquisite, you probably only want to remove a millimeter or two here since the center is already so high up. Next thing that you're going to want to check is that the back band can accommodate the preferred height of your hook and eye. So I like using a three high hook and eye, but a lot of patterns are drafted for a two high hook and eye, or in my experience, a hook and eye that's just shorter than what I prefer. And of course, if you just cut this out, there's no way that you can make this taller later, which would mean you have to unpick it and recut this piece, which would just be annoying um, when this is a really simple test. So this is the bottom Pico edge. So this is going to ultimately get tucked under. So you're just going to line up your preferred hook and eye with the Pico edge here and make sure that it is tall enough. So for me, the original pattern is here. So I've just taken a piece of paper underneath of it and taped it on. And I've just redrawn that and made my own little curve. Uh, this doesn't need to be super scientific either. You just want to make sure that 
you have enough space between this bottom pico edge and wherever the top is to accommodate your hook and eye. And then gently scoop this in if you're looking for a scoop back kind of attachment like the Exquisite has, which is my preferred. So that's a super simple modification there to make sure that your hook and eye fits. Now onto the cup pieces. Um, I added the same height to the outer sling as I did to the cradle because otherwise the cup wouldn't be tall enough to fit into the cradle and that underwire still is not going to fit. So I just added that same quarter of an inch and blended it into the sling. That way it is tall enough to accommodate my underwire, but otherwise no modification on the sling. And then for these three cup pieces, if you have any modifications, it's going to depend on your materials. Um, for me today, I'm going to be using this embroidered tool. Um, I love using embroidered tool for the exquisite, um, but the exquisite does have a seam allowance on the top of the cup that's meant to be folded over and then have a decorative trim on it. But for me, if I use embroidered tool, I finish the upper edge with fold over elastic. And otherwise, I typically am using an embroidered tool. I typically would use an embroidered tool lace, like the famous strawberry lace. And then that upper edge is already finished and doesn't need the allowance either. So for me, since I am never going to use the exquisite in the way that I'll use a, direct, a decorative trim, I have just gotten rid of the seam allowance that is up here. So this is what my pieces look like. Um, and now the pattern is good to go. I do want to take a moment just to talk about pattern piece placement and laces with the exquisite. In my opinion, the exquisite works best with patterns that are pretty evenly dispersed. So here, this piece of embroidered tool lace, um, it has a floral pattern to it, but it's pretty spread out and you can take the pieces and line them up in a way that makes sense. Um, and I've made exquisites with this before and I think that they look excellent. Um, and I would always recommend for your inner cup lining the underwire channeling here, so this line, with the low point of the lace. That way if you do the low point of the lace on both sides, the cup is going to be even and symmetrical. And of course when you place your lace, you're looking, if you're having a piece of embroidered tool like this, to mirror your pieces. So cut out this piece and then find its match over here and cut it out upside down and then you'll have mirrored pieces. Of course, if you have tool, let me see here, like this rose tool, there's no way to mirror it. So you're just looking for symmetry. But this is an example of a lace that does not work well for the exquisite because the roses are so big and fat, they don't actually fit into the pieces. And then you just end up with this row of really chunky cut in half roses and it looks terrible. I did sew an example, but I can't find it. But point is, this lace doesn't really work very well for the exquisite, but something like this does, or embroidered tool that's a big yardage. That way you can place the pieces down in a way that makes sense and looks balanced. Whenever you're cutting things out, if you have um, you know, a lace like this, where you have mirrored images, then you can have the exact same image on both sides of the bra. But otherwise you're looking for symmetry. If there's a big rose here, then there should be a big rose here. Um, and you definitely have more flexibility of materials to use something like this kind of embroidered bee tool or the floral tool that I've been using if you're lining it with Trico. Trico is a super stable lining material and um, it's going to work the way that it should with the direction of greatest stretch because bras are always sewn with the direction of greatest stretch um, so you would find the really stretchy direction and if it was this way you'd be lining your pieces up like this but that doesn't always work with the orientation of a lace so you line it with trico which is really stable and it makes sure that the bra fits the way that it should okie dokie so this is what we're working with for one side plus the bridge. I tried to evenly distribute the bees or get as many bees in each piece as possible, but that also means that this is looking a little bit too linear for me, so I might recut this. I don't know. I don't know if I love it. Or maybe I'll recut this so there's one bee here instead of two, so it's not just a straight line of bees. But 
tried to get lots of bees in all of the pieces. Also tried to avoid the seam allowance where possible because I don't want really bulky seams. You can trim and top stitch them down, but it is just something to be aware of. Also, when you're sewing to make sure you don't break a needle, just be cautious in those areas. Um, but I say go with the placement that makes the bees look the best and then you can figure the rest out later. Um, just be mindful as you're doing it. When it comes to cutting, um, I do recommend having a self-healing mat and a rotary cutter. It's not necessary, but it's definitely one of those things that if you decide you're going to sew lingerie and that it's fun and it's going to be a hobby, it makes the cutting so much easier, faster, and precise than working with scissors. So highly recommend that, although it's not necessary. And if it's your first bra, maybe don't make the investment, but if you decide after your first one you like it, definitely recommend it. When it comes to determining the direction of stretch for your mesh, um, we are going to take a piece of fabric and if you look at it from afar, you probably can see lines. That's your direction of stretch. Um, and so what that looks like on your fabric is when you pull your fabric, these little lines, they get thinner. Um, you don't want to do it where the direction of stretch is where they get bigger and turn into bigger honeycombs. You want the thin honeycombs, not the thick honeycombs. And you know, it doesn't make so much of a difference at first, but it's really unfortunate. One of my favorite bras, I thought the correct direction of stretch was where the honeycombs got bigger, which makes sense if you think about it, but that bra lost its retention and like elasticity so quick with those honeycombs your bra is going to last a lot longer if you're going this direction which is the tiny slits it just has a lot more strength to it and resistance and that's what you need to make a bra work so you don't want the honeycombs you want the thin thin slats